Good morning. So, I hope you all ready and uh, had a good night's sleep last night. Did you sleep well? No, Not very hard. <laughs> okay. So hopefully, and uh, still you can awake and uh, listen, and uh, also that the prayer really make a difference in our lives as well. So today uh, is a, the first Sunday after the Easter. We had it uh, celebrated in the last the Sunday, and I just come back to the, our theme again on prayer, because uh, the prayer is uh, such an uh, important, you know, this theme and uh, also the subject. Actually, we need to learn and also the understanding more the ways of God. And here in this passage, Numbers chapter 14, and uh, it's a great uh, chapter, this, having this uh, the, the, one of the great the prayer the founded in the Old Testament. And uh, so this is the prayer actually that make a whole difference in the nation of Israel. Because uh, before coming into this uh, our own text, we need to see that uh, what happened in the earlier. Because uh, chapter 13 and 14 should be uh, in one, the whole section in the book of Numbers. Here in this time, the Israel people the stood on the brink of the entering the promised land of Canaan. Because they traveled almost like it over one year. They stayed most of the time in the Mount Sinai and receiving the law, especially Ten Commandments, and establishing the tabernacles. So they spent a lot of time there in Mount Sinai, then moved here, then in the wilderness Paran they came. Then at that time, you know, God commanded them to send out the scouts to examine the land. That is uh, chapter 13, verse 2, and we see that here. The main purpose of their scout is not to determine you know, whether the land is desirable or they can go and whether they're going to occupy that land in the future or not. Because already when God gave that the command, when they send out the, the scouts and the, over the, this land, God clearly stated that in verse 1, this is the land I'm going to give you. This is a gift for them. This is a wonderful gift that God provides for them. You go and survey the land, what the, the situation is about. The reason they need it, because even though God is with them, definitely they will conquer them by God's power, but they needed also strategy, how to engage the world and battles to conquering the land. So that means God's power at the same time, and uh, we needed a plan that these two things actually to go together. Because that's the big mistake, as you know, and uh, in this uh, the survey, and uh, this, there are two uh, reports that came. Because uh, after 40 days you know, of the survey of the land, actually their survey, their scout was very successful. And uh, because they're able to move around the, from the, the south all the way to the the north, the Lebot Hamas area, without any trouble, those 12 people, they traveled and again and surveyed all and spent a lot of time in Hebron and the other the cities. And uh, then these people came back and gave the report. As a user, we have a two report. That majority report is very negative. But the other minor rep, uh, report is uh, positive. Because they put the, the word the but, but all of them, they all agree. And the land is exceedingly good. It is truly you know, what God promised, the land of the milk and uh, the honey, the flow with it, you know, this is very good the land. Even they brought uh, the grape 
the one chobit, you know, two, the people have to carry. That means that this is such a the fertile land, and uh, it is a very good one. But they put the but. The but is that, you know, but there are the giants, the Anak. The, the descendants of Anak is there, and also there, the, the castle, they have uh, the, the, the cities uh, surrounded by the, the, the walls, the fortified it, and uh, very the strong. And uh, ten of them thinking it is uh, unconquerable. That is their thought. And then these people, and uh, then, but Joshua and Caleb gave the very positive thought. Yes, that's true, but God is with us. And these people will be the, our food. Then, because God is with us, then definitely and we will conquer the land. So don't rebel against God. But as we know that, the whole community, they're against the, the Moses and the Aaron. And also, and, uh, those Joshua and Caleb, they are, they are even about to stone them. And they, that is the kind of things, you know, uh, the, they expected that. In verse 2 to 4, it said that if only we had died in Egypt or in the wilderness, why is the Lord bring us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as a plunder. Wouldn't it bad? be better for us to go back to Egypt, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. This is the, the, the people's response to that. Very the different, you know, the opinion. And here, because here in these cases, as you know, in the whole story, we know the very well, and the, the majority opinion is not always right. Normally, we go for when you are bought, right? We follow the majority, and we go on that one. But in this case, and their report was totally wrong. So that is the kind of lessons we know that here in this passage. And sometimes we have to think about it. What kind of things we really believe and follow? What kind of report do we receive? The main reasons, and uh, they have uh, the bad report, and the whole community they believe it because they left out God in their calculation. They didn't think about it, God at all. When you, they consider the, what is going to happen for them, but this whole congregation, the ten spies and the, the rest of the people, they uh, didn't have any idea about God. That is the big, big mistake these people uh, made it here. So what is the response to that? We know that in verse 5, that Moses and the Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the people of Israel. That is a perfect and a response to this tough situation. Whole congregation you know, against them. And the later on, even they tried to kill you know, these people. Not only and, uh, the Caleb and Joshua, but also the Moses and the Aaron. And uh, they want to really do something about it here. But most important one is, this is the, their response to this kind of situation. The Moses Aaron fell on the faces before all the assembly of the congregation, which means that the posture is the, the posture of prayer. They are humble before God, and that everything that what they are going experience right now, they turn to God when for God's help. As you know that you know this is the Joshua and the Caleb, even though they want to stop it, but they couldn't do it. And uh, there's, uh, there's a big thing, see, these people uh, are the really, you know, the causing them, you know, great havoc among the people. And uh, these two people, 
They are the minority report, but they included God in their calculation, in their thinking, everything. Yes, everything is God, but here, in this way, if God is with us, all right, then they are bread for us. That kind of attitude, you know, they have it. The pro- their protection removed from them, and the Lord is with us, and do not fear them. That is the, this, uh, the two persons, and really the encourage people to having faith in God, and uh, based on the faith, they have to act upon it. But these people, and uh, they did not, you know, uh, receive their report of it. So the whole congregation at the time you know, about to stone them. You know, verse 10 is talking about in that passage. So, but at the very time, and uh, they, they, these people were trying to the stone to kill these people. Then the verse 10 to 12, you know, God you know, appeared and he intervened the whole situation. Because this whole instant, to raise the wrath of the Lord. And he was not happy about it, what happened. Because in verse 10, he mentioned about it, the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of the meeting to all the people of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people despise me? And how long will they not believe in me in spite of all the signs that I have done among them? I will strike them with a persistence and disinherit them. Then I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. That is the God is saying in here. So this is the kind of context. And the Moses pray. The passage we read is the prayer he offered to God. So here, in this uh, sentence and in this uh, passage, you need to notice that. One, you need to actually observe, you know, what is going on here. If God really want to wipe them up and raise a nation out of the Moses, the family, the line, God can do it, Right? And also, the Moses didn't have any doubt about you know, what God can do. Yes, God is almighty, and he can do such a things. He believed on that, right? But uh, the Moses really you know, uh, turned to God and uh, even the, the pray in, uh, in according to what God is revealed to him. Actually, the what things happen here is not the first time. It happens before. The, as you remember, the instance of a golden calf. That is a time also God threat and to wipe them up and uh, for these people. That's written in uh, Exodus chapter 32 and uh, that passage. But that time and here, God is speaking to the Moses. Do you see the uh, clue on this? Yes, God can do, if He really intended it, He can wipe them up, whole nations, and raise another nation. And uh, out of the Moses, the line, He can do it. But He said that to Moses. Do you see that the, what is going on here? That means God is actually giving, the, in a sense, is a queen to, queen to uh, Moses. You need to pray. You know, you, you did it in the past, actually. And uh, then about the God's wrath at the time. But here, again, God is speaking to Moses. In that, you know, that means that he's uh, asking his prayer. And uh, the Moses did it. And uh, he knows it, the Lord, very well. And uh, he pray according to the God's will here. If you're reading this whole passage, the, the, especially the prayer part of the Moses, you have a divide in the two part. Verse 13 to 16, he is uh, focusing on the God's righteous reputation. 
That means uh, the fame, the name of God. And uh, he wants to uplift it and, uh, in his prayer. Then, verse 17 to 19, he's uh, focusing on God's merciful character. And uh, that is the whole, this prayer is uh, divided into. The first part, and uh, he's uh, em- emphasizing God's honor and God's glory and uh, his God's reputation he's focusing on. Then the second part is based on his prayer on the God's character. So that is the kind of the prayer that Moses actually did pray here. We need to see that here how you know, Moses prayed here. Verse 13 to 16, he's uh, really uh, raising the question to God. Because God said, and I will wipe them up and kill them at once and raise a nation from you. And uh, the, from your descendants, uh, the greater and mightier than them. Right? And uh, then, the, if that is to happen, the Moses argue, then your reputation, your name will be marred. Why? What do you think about the Egyptian and also the people who are living in the Canaan? What do they think about it? The instance, if you really do that, because they might thought that if you do such a way, then God is not, the, not able to bring them to the, what they promise. He is not have a power to bring them to the, the promised land. So in the middle of it, and God killed them. They might have a certain notions, and uh, these people have it. And uh, so that is the kind of argument. And uh, here the Moses you know, the use it for his uh, prayer. That means uh, the Moses was uh, so jealous for the reputation and the honor of God among the nations. So that is the lesson, actually, that you know, we need to learn. When we are so uh, having a life of trouble in our lives, when we are facing the trouble as a, the personally, uh, even in the church-wide, even the nationwide, and the things that, that happen here, when we pray over the situation over it, for our own life, for the church, and for the nations, then what is really the motivate you and the pray before God? Why do you want to change the way the people that live here in this nation or in our church or in our own personal life or the persons whom we love and we pray for? Is it just only the seeing the changes, right, you're looking for? Definitely, that is not the case here because uh, the Moses the, his prayers are so effective because uh, he is uh, really thinking about it, God's honor, God's reputation, and God's glory. And uh, he is his mind when you pray. As I uh, prepare this message, and uh, this one is reminding me the, uh, the loss, the model prayer. I don't want to call it a lost prayer we commonly call but actually, this lost the mother prayer, the prayer we should base on. Bury the first. You know, they're calling God the, who is in the heaven, what we pray. We pray very first. One is, hallowed be your name. That is the, our Lord taught us to pray. That means uh, whenever we come before the presence of God in prayer, personally and cooperatively as a body of Christ. And uh, the things we have to remember that is God's glory. God should be honored. God should be, you know, the, really the glorified in that uh, prayer when we pray before God. This, the, the prayer Jesus is really reminded us, hallow be your name. And uh, so that is the, the kind of things we have to learn from here in this passage. The way that Moses pray, 
he's uh, focusing on God's honor, God's glory, and God's reputation. And uh, he's uh, focusing on that. Then second thing, so we notice that, you know, the following, the verse 17 to 19, we know that he uh, now moving into another principle. And he based on his prayer. Because his prayer was not yet finished. Because uh, he also moving into the, on the basis of second principle. That is the merciful, gracious, and forgiving character of God. That is the, the very, the very first. Verse the 18. And uh, he stated that in his own prayer. Because we... That is one of the things really and uh, giving us the confidence when we before God. When you face the, un, uh, the overcoming, we cannot uh, overcoming the such a problem in our lives or in a nation wise, the things we have to remember that is the character of God. The glory of God is the first, and certainly then uh, the character of God. And especially God is really such a the merciful and He is a forgiving and a pardoning God. And He is a slow to anger, you know, He pointed out in this passage. One of the things you know, we and, uh, need to remember that, you know, uh, God of, you know, in the Old Testament, many people are thinking that, you know, you know God... God is a God of judgment in the Old Testament. And then the, in the, it comes in the New Testament, and we see that uh, the, another aspect of God, another character of God, mercy and the grace of God is being revealed in the New Testament. That's uh, too open. Many the modern readers of the Bible you know, have accused the Old Testament of the presenting a God of wrath in the Old Testament. But that is not the case here. Because here the Moses in his prayer and also the, the whole, the, the Old Testament, we need to see that, you know, that is incorrect. God is truly God of mercy even the Old Testament time. And he is a loving and a merciful God, but at the same time, he is also a just and righteous God. Because both statements are true and must be true. And for him to be true to his own nature and character. But promise today, and in our modern Christians, we are so much focusing on the mercy and love of God. And we are talking about a lot, right? And sometimes we go too much. So there is the church is called it the hyper grace church. Too much on emphasize grace, that aspect, neglecting the other character of God in their own lives. So, and that is uh, the kind of things we have to remember that here. If you read this passage, the, the prayer he offered, actually that is the one God revealed to him in the past, after the instance, the golden calf. Exodus chapter uh, 34, verse 6 to 7. That time, you know, the Lord passed before him. They proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God of merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for the thousands, forgiving in iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty. Visiting iniquity of the fathers on the children's and the children's children to the third and fourth generations. That is Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 to 7. God himself declared to Moses when he prayed. And when he gave the second time, the, the tablet, you know, giving the, the Ten Commandments again. Because here in the Numbers chapter 14, he is, that is the aspect he is emphasizing here. The law is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and forgiving iniquity and transgressions. But here the word 
here in this passage, English translation, he said that steadfast love here, but that is in Hebrew, it's a very famous word. You know, all the time, whenever we read it, the Old Testament, we meet this word that is hesed. Because the ch sound is, our, the ch is almost like a K sound. Last time, Pastor Brandon pointed out. But actually, the original there is a ch, but it's very strong, very hard to pronounce. Anyhow, and uh, he is uh, based on, in the God's character, especially at the beginning, this, uh, the Hesed. The Hesed is God's, the loyal, covenantal, the faithfulness. That means that this is uh, one of the very important the concept, and we all have to remember, because the, today we are going to have a communion again, uh, just uh, last uh, Easter Sunday, but the communion, actually we remind that we are in the relationship with God in covenant. God is in making covenant with us. This is a new covenant we're talking about. But God is very faithful to his promise in his covenant. And he's very loyal and faithful to keep in uh, his promise. That's why the Moses, the focusing on the hazard. God's covenantal, the loyal, the love and faithfulness. He is uh, focusing in on that, and uh, so that is the, the we have to remember that especially. But on other things we have to remember, he continued. He did not stop there, but he also continued that he will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of fathers on the children and to the third and fourth generations. He also laid the path of God's character, God's justice, God's righteousness. He also, he uh, pointed out and, uh, in this prayer. That means that we, when you pray, and we have to remember that in the, both the characters of God, not so much on the mercies and the God's side. Yes, that's good. But also we're not forgetting the other side of God's character, His justice and His righteousness. Because so as we celebrated Easter and we went through the, the, whole, the Good Friday, when you see the cross, what do you see there? We have a, even just now in the background, you see the cross. Whenever we see the cross, what do you see? First of all, we see that God's justice, God's righteousness there. The sin we committed deserve God's punishment. No way we can escape from it, right? And uh, that the cross is showing that you know, God is angry toward the, our sins we committed before Him. And uh, God does not take it. The people are taking him, so despising him. Just allow here in this passage, how long your people despise me? You know, the God has become very angry the way the people the, behave. Not the act out in the light of faith in him. No belief, no consideration of God in their prayer in their life. And they're the one and going the way, whatever they wanted. And uh, just like the people the outside the church and uh, the way they live, and, uh, this, uh, even the people of God, so-called, and uh, also they does not show any difference in their behavior, in their lifestyle. And at the same time, he mentioned about it that these people are uh, really uh, despising him you know, ten times here. But as you're looking at that here, then the ten times actually really is a, can be taken as a rhetorical way, but at the same time, we can take it as uh, uh, literally. Because of the Israel people, the Jewish understanding of it, and uh, he uh, really did mention about it in this passage. And uh, then they reached it out, and uh, the ten, the actual, the the, the rebellion they made it before the Lord. 
just before the, this instant, starting from the, at the Red Sea, the, when the Paro, the chase after them, Exodus chapter 14, and Mara, and where they found the bitter water. Then third one instance is in the wilderness scene where they hungered, right? Then also in the wilderness scene when they gathered the manna, and also they did, did not follow the God's direction, right? And also the, uh, because there, uh, in the wilderness scene, they gathered the manna on the Sabbath day, and that is another instance there. Then the Rephidim, where they thirst for water, right? Then the uh, Sinai, that is the most important one. It is the number seventh, interestingly, where they set up the golden calf. Then the Tabera, where they get raised against the Lord. And Kibrot, the Hatava, where they lust for the meat. That is just the last the one. Then this time, the tenth at the Kadesh. And uh, in the desert of Paran, the way they choose to follow the bad report of ten spies, and I even did not listen to what the Joshua and Caleb and the report, and uh, based on their unbelief, and they really did it the ten times. Interesting, you know, God, even they calculated, whenever we did something wrong, He knows it everything, right? God does not even forget. He knows it, everything, the things we did it before Him. Even from the time to time, He reminded them what they did. You did it the ten times. The ten times, actually ten times, as like the Talmud, the Jewish the scholars, they follow the, this the line of thought. And also the number ten is a number of completeness. Rhetorically, we can take it. That means it just they did it all the way to the full. And God is waiting. And uh, the way they should behave, you know, have you changed it out of the, one of the instances after the other. And uh, God provided forgiveness. The miraculously provided everything they needed. But still, these people didn't get it, the, what God did for them. So the, out of that, you know, in this prayer, as you're looking at that, you know, God, the Actually, the answers, the Moses' prayer, in spite of all, and God said, I pardoned. But what is going to happen? The, the people who rebel against me, who said about it, their children cannot make it, they're the one who will be died. Forty years, the, the, the days they survey the land, and they will. The, during the, those uh, the 40 day years, they will wander around the wilderness and then they will all die. Then the older generation will go on and the new generation and I will bring them in, in the promised land. So you see that here, even God's response, God's answer is two things, right? Show the, His mercy and His compassion to them. He pardon them their sins, but does not mean that it, they can live whatever they wanted, right? That means God, they have to pay for their consequences, their sin before God. We have to remember that this one, you know, we cannot just live it, whatever I wanted. And the ones who are in Christ Jesus, then we should be very careful. And also not only taking care of the sin well, but also we have to change the way you know, we live after confession of our faith and confession of sins, right? So that is the kind of things we have to remember. Just looking at the one of the people's experience, like the King David, the, the person, you know, God said that uh, the, he is one, you know, really his heart is after me. And, uh, but why he had uh, such a suffering and difficulties later on? Once he made a such mistake and such a sin and before God, right after that, you know, in his last few years, he had many trials and difficulties. Even his own son tried to kill him. And also, the, he did it in a hidden way, but he did it publicly. You know, all the people know 
you know, that the, what he thinks that he did it. Because that is God is doing it. When you commit the sin before God and we repent of it, God mercifully forgive our sins. But the consequence will be followed. Someone even uh, give the, the kind of uh, illustration. When you, the nail on the wall, right? Once you put it there, then when you pull it out, the nail there, yes, the, the nail was removed, but the marks is still there, right? <laughs> Something, and we have to learn the lessons from it here. So out of this whole passage, what should we learn from the Moses' great prayer? The, things, the first thing really we need to have is the, we must have it intercessor like Moses, who really stand between God and the people. Stand, he stand between the gaps, and really, and he made it an intercession before God, and uh, then his prayer make a whole difference, and a whole the generation of Israel people survive, even though they have to wander around it, the wilderness for 40 years. But uh, the, one of the things you know, we have to think and also pray that you know, in our church and also in the nation of Malaysia, and you know, we needed a strong the intercessor you know, like Moses. God raised such people and, uh, so that you know, we can stand between gap. And uh, that is a really challenging uh, personally for me. Because here is the one of the leader in the, at the time, make a whole difference. And uh, each one of us, and uh, who have the leadership role, and uh, we have to that kind of responsibility, become the intercessor and for the nation and for the church and also for the families around us. And uh, that's our responsibility. Because the network he gave is our own responsibility. And we should be the intercessor like Moses. At the same time, we have to learn that, you know, the, when you pray, and we need to focus on God's glory and honor and reputation. That is the purpose of prayer. That is the purpose of worship. It's not about what I can gain from the church worship service. Many people are having a kind of idea when you come to worship service, what kind of benefit I can have it from here? But they're not really thinking about God. And when we gather, and that God is, should be worshipped, He's on focus in our worship and our prayer. And that is the kind of things we have to really focus in our prayer, in our daily lives. At the same time, we must base our prayer on God's balanced character both his mercy and justice. In the balance, the character of God and the way I pray make it whole changes. Because uh, these two, the aspects of Moses' prayer is very effective. And uh, his prayer was answered. At the same time, the forgiveness must be confused with the consequences that often follow our sin. Israel people, once they made it a very bad mistake, that whole changed the whole life in their life. The 40 years without purpose, wandering around the wilderness. And uh, the, the, because they made it the critical moment, even though our sin was forgiven, but they lost God's original purpose for them. They were the very best and enjoying the life in the Canaan, and, but they lost the opportunity of it because the things they did. But thank God that Moses really made that whole changes out of our prayer. The prayer that you know, we all become like Moses and are interceding for the nation and interceding for the church and the city, the people around me, the people who need it, really Jesus Christ. We have to pray for them so that we see that the changes after that in their lives, and also in a church and nations as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you. 
Thank you, Father, for teaching us this wonderful prayer of Moses, how he prayed in a, such a critical and pivotal moment of Israel's history. He made a whole difference and changes in the whole situation. And thank God, Father, you are the, the answering to our prayer. And it's just one man's prayer. Even you listen and change your purpose. And, uh, and also, the, you continue to encourage us to be like Moses in this time, Lord. And we are living in the very critical moments in history. Because the everything is going to be end sooner or later. We don't know when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Then the, before that, there are tribulations increase. The much more difficulties and trial will go on. And the harder, the many people, their heart will be the cold and become the cold and not even having a faith in Jesus Christ, Lord. And that person remember, and in this critical time, and the, the prayer we need to have before God, and also put it into our practice in our daily lives, Lord, so that, Father, we can see the, your work through the prayer in our personal life, in our family life, and also friends in the other people's life whom we pray for at the same time, church, and also nations, Lord. And you uh, can do it. And uh, having a, such a faith and a practicing it on a daily basis as well, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.